So squashes are a pretty um, general term for a lot of different types of varieties. Um, they have a lot of different traits that make them great for different uses. Um, certainly when we talk about squash as a whole, we can be referring to summer squash or winter squash or kind of the, the first level of division that you'll come across. Um, summer squash being things like your zucchinis or your patty pans um, and your yellow straight necks or crook necks. And so a lot of those are shorter maturing, and so you'll grow them a lot during the summer months. Uh, and um, for those who have grown summer squash before, you know you can get a lot of harvest out of them if you keep them picked. So it is a great crop to use if you want to have ongoing harvest throughout the summer season. Um, zucchinis can be green or golden, and they have pretty similar characteristics between the two. Um, big difference just being the color. You can have you know different um, colors of green zucchinis as well, darker or lighter. Um, you'll have some things like patty pans. They're kind of disc-shaped, and they often have a little bit more of a nutty flavor, so you can use them in different applications. Um, similarly, some of the gray squashes will have that kind of nuttier flavor as well, gray zucchinis. Then yellow uh, straight necks and crook necks have more of a tender skin and a more pale yellow color. Um, and so you can use those for very similar dishes that you would use zucchinis for, but they do have some different quality in terms of texture and uh, people may prefer one over the other. And then some differences for harvesting as well. You know, um, summer squashes are typically a bush habit plant, so it's nicer for um, use in smaller gardens. And certain varieties may be spineless and others are spined. So depending on what type of effort you want to put in your garden, you may face some challenges with some spiny plants. They can be pretty scratchy. So there are some nice varieties that are spineless uh, in the summer squash section as well. And those are some of the traits that we like to look for in selecting new varieties of uh, summer squash. I have a smaller property, so I have a home garden size growing space at my house. And in my household, we eat a lot of vegetables, so I rely on what we can plant in the garden for our day-to-day our -day needs. We like to plant a mixture of summer squash, so we'll have some zucchinis as well as yellow summer squash. Uh, two of my favorites are Cash Machine for our green zucchini and the Multi Pick for our yellow summer squash. Cash Machine is nice. It has a pretty open plant habit. Uh, Kristen had mentioned sometimes plants, the zucchinis and the summer squashes can have spiny arms. So that particular variety has reduced spines. It's easy to harvest. The fruit is a nice green color with some flecking um, and it's a pretty decent producer. So you can harvest you know, just about every day, every other day off of those. And for the same reason, I like the multi-pick. It has a more subtle flavor. It's not as strong as the zucchinis are, um, but they're nice to have to throw into a veggie saute. Sometimes we will marinate them in salad dressings and cook them on the grill. So they're a nice addition to have in the garden. And they are a shorter season crop, so we can get away with doing a couple of plantings and have some successions to have you know, fresh squash throughout the entire summer. And that's been nice um, for us at the garden. Um, then on the winter squash side, there's even more diversity of squash types. Um, some of the more familiar ones that we see a lot in our grocery stores and markets are acorns, butternuts, spaghetti squash, delicatas are becoming more popular. And then some that are maybe less commonly seen but are still excellent are things like hubbards and kabochas. Um, and so all of those different winter squashes have a lot of different quality characteristics and applications, as well as different growing times and storage lengths for the fruit after you've harvested them. For the most part, winter squash will be full vine plants, so you'll need to plan on extra space to grow those. And you'll get more of a, a single harvest out of a winter squash, so you would let them grow to full maturity um, and cure on the vine before you would harvest them in the fall. So you aren't getting ongoing um, harvest like you would from a summer squash. Um, but the great thing about winter squash is that each plant puts out a lot of fruit. And depending on how large the fruit are, uh, you may get more or less um, based on that type and variety. Uh, and often you can harvest a lot of these fruit in the fall. You can use them right after you've harvested them or you can store them for a while. So that's a great benefit of growing winter squash so that you have fresh produce that you can eat as you head into the winter months. Um, some of the types of squash that were mentioned being acorn, uh, and butternut are two of the most popular types. 
Acorns don't store for very long, so we tend to eat them predominantly in the fall. Um, and they have more of a lighter yellow or golden internal color and a green skin. Uh, and some nice ways to use those are to roast them um, or to mash them. Butternuts have a deep orange internal flesh and more of a tan or buff colored skin. Um, and sometimes you can get quite a lot of squash uh, flesh from each fruit. So they can be great for larger families uh, if you grow some bigger varieties. But there are also varieties that are much smaller to be more of a personal size. So there's a lot of diversity within butternuts. And they tend to have a pretty high sugar content. So people like to use them a lot in baking and, again, as, as a side for fall dishes. Um, some other types that have become more popular are spaghetti squashes, which um, we see a lot as an option for an alternative to pasta as a side dish. Um, spaghetti squashes are interesting because the way that the internal flesh grows, um, after you roast those uh, the squash as you're preparing it for a meal, you can shred that flesh internally and it'll give you nice um, strands of spaghetti squash that you can use in that way instead of spaghetti um, given the name spaghetti squash. We also have a lot of interest lately in delicatas. They have a nice um, nutty flavor and can also be roasted uh, like you would an acorn. They don't store quite as long as some other squash types, so they are more of a fall use squash. And then some of the uh, types that are maybe used less often being um, like your Hubbards and Kabochas, they may have a harder skin but that helps them store a lot longer into the winter. So those are great choices if you want to have squash to eat going into the later winter months like January, February, March. Um, they have a bit of a drier flesh as well. So you may be familiar with butternuts being a little more of a moist flesh with a high sugar content. Um, kabochas and hubbards will have a drier flesh, which again helps them store longer into the winter. Um, but they do still have a high sugar content and some interesting nutty flavors depending on the varieties that you choose. So they can be a great way to add some diversity to the types of squash that you grow. On the winter squash side, we winter squash is one of my favorites. I love to have uh, veggies to have during the winter time. And because we have a limited growing space, we tend to grow some of the bush type varieties. One of my favorites is the bush delicata. It is a really sweet fruit. And when you roast them, the, the outer rind softens and is edible. So you don't have to worry so much about cleaning the internals out. But that's one of my favorites to grow. And it's an AAS winner. So it's part of the All America selections. It's been tried in a bunch of different regions around the country and it does well. Um, the flavor is great. The plant habit is small. Definitely one of my favorites. We're also a big fan of the spaghetti squash. So I tend to plant the Tivoli. Um, it has larger fruit. We get like a four or five pound squash off of it. Um, and for Myself, we have some folks in the family that are gluten-free, so it's a great option to have that we can still have that, you know, spaghetti-type meal, but everybody can eat it. And it's so easy to roast and to just add a little bit of salt and pepper and butter, a little garlic. You've got a delicious meal right there. I took home one of almost every variety that we grew just so I could taste test and see which ones we liked. I liked the some of the ones that we planted, but I think my partner liked some of the experimental. <laughs> he was like, I want those. Shows like, promise <laughs> for the future of the product line, right? Yeah. 